I'm Shannon Skinner and I'm here with Susan Miller who's an author, astrologer, and the founder of the website astrologyzone.com. Susan, thanks so much for being here. I'm so thrilled. I am so excited. Thank you. Oh, 21 years on the net. I can't believe it. Your interest in astrology began when you were young. I was, well, I was 14. Mm -hmm. That's um, young. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I was born with a birth defect that so kept me in bed. I mean, I couldn't go out. I couldn't eat with my family. I couldn't, you know, get a book by myself. My mother had to get me what I needed because I was in excruciating pain when I would have an attack. It would feel like some kind of thick liquid like chocolate syrup would fall into my, my leg from nowhere. <laughs> and I would just be in so much pain for six to eight weeks. Luckily, it only happened once a year, but that put me out of school quite a bit. I was in the hospital 11 months. I had They had to paralyze me from the knee down. So I had a drop foot. I couldn't wiggle my toes. I couldn't feel anything. My mother would take me to physical therapy every day, five days a week, six hours a day, to regenerate that nerve. I wanted to know, is there a happy ending to all this effort because gosh I was just starting my life and uh, I had three years of homeschool at that point point. and so then over the course of your um, mm. your early years uh, and your adult you started to fine-tune and study well astrology. I asked my mother to teach me but she wouldn't she kept saying no this is serious stuff it's not a parlor game those are your exact words she said, you have to study for 12 years, and you're only 14. You don't know what 12 years is. I wrote to the editor-in-chief of Dell's Horoscope magazine, and I asked her if I'd ever walk again. I knew I, what time I was born and, you know, day, month, year, and city. You have to have the exact time of birth to get a chart right. One day, my mother walks into the living room and says, did you write the Horoscope magazine? I think you're in the latest issue. And she, uh, I said, what did she say? She said, let's read it together. And, you know, in astrology, you can't say yes or no. You have to look at the whole picture. Great family support, distinguished doctor, lives in a big city, good, you know, where you have access to good medical care, a good attitude of the patient, mm -hmm. and good aspects to the two houses of health. And they said, we think, the, the editor-in-chief said, I think you'll walk again. I said, no. Wow. What, what do these words mean, these astrological terms? You have to teach me. She said, oh, no, you're going to check the editor-in-chief. I'm like, yes. <laughs> she said, you're never going to stop. You're never going to stop asking me. I said, never. She said, all right, 12 years, and you're not to read a chart outside the family. I need to be in the room every time you're doing anything. And what was to happen was such a philosophical discussion between the two of us. Like, for example, when you there's 12 houses, and each house of the horoscope, and it looks like a pizza, has a, a, a job to do, or, a, you know, it rules a different part of life. The 12th house is a house that many people don't understand when they're studying astrology. It's a mysterious house. It's the last house before it comes to the first house. So it's the subconscious and dreams. Uh, it symbolizes your life in the placenta before you were born, because it's right before life. She said, this is also the house of self-undoing. I'm like, Mama, that means people would do things to themselves, to hurt themselves, and they would never do that. And she laughed, and she said, all the time, Susie, all the time. Sometimes they know they're hurting themselves, and sometimes they don't. Like, they know they shouldn't smoke, but, you know, or sometimes they just don't know that they have destructive self, self-destructive self behavior. And there were a lot of moments like that. But she had said to me when I was very little, did you ever think about why you were born? And I had bangs, a little Campbell's soup haircut, you know, like a little Buster Brown haircut. I said, no, Mommy, no. She said, well, you should. We all have to come to the answer of why we were born and find that reason. Why, what could you give to other people? So when I was nine, I asked her, what am I going to be when I grow up? She said, all right, let's, let's take a look. She said, you're going to write, and I'm going to work on your grammar now that I see this. <laughs> and she said, but when you get closer to 40, some newly invented form of communication 
so new we don't know the name of it yet, will change the way you work and be the channel in which you make your ultimate contribution to the world. Suddenly, I'm remembering the childhood, you know, the six-year-old in me. The need to know about the future is based in wanting to prepare for the future. Um, you want to have a productive life. You want it to be rich with experience. And sometimes we feel stuck. Mm -hmm. And astrology can give you several answers. And you know best which one feels right for you. You are an expert on your life. The thing I love most about astrology is... Unlike a lot of self-help books that tell you what to do, astrology doesn't. You have free will. I'm going to give you all the possibilities. And maybe I forgot one, but I'll start you thinking by giving you those possibilities. And you will choose the right one. You know, I after I read a chart, I say I never know all of you. It will take me years to know all of you. And... I need a lot of feedback. You have to tell me how certain aspects affected you. And then I make a note. But uh, I'm, I'm not like two hours and I've got you down pat. I am so not like so that. So you actually raise a, an interesting point, which, which actually ties into a previous interview that I did, free will. Mm -hmm. Do we have free will? Yes. Or, or is it predestined? Yes. Everything that I am comes from what has happened. And for everyone, for you too. Mm -hmm. all, you are a sum of all your experiences that have brought you to today and all your decisions have brought you to today but the beauty of life is you can always make it better if you're not happy where you are today then you can work on it life is hard it's not supposed to be easy we're supposed to have a course of learning you know we have the different planets that have a job to do um, for example the two most important ones are Saturn and Jupiter and Saturn tests you to the core and Jupiter gives you rewards. And it's funny because the two symbols of Saturn and Jupiter are very similar. If you look at Jupiter, it looks like a four mm -hmm. and the cross is on the bottom and that cross is always matter in astrology. So spirit is over matter. Spirit dominates. But Saturn looks like a little H with a cross on top. So you have to deal with the here and now with what you can touch and feel. And a uh, spirit comes after that when you have dealt with it. Saturn teaches you to be realistic. And I think that's one of the best things my mother gave me, a real strong practicality. You know, when you're facing events, she said, don't wring your hands and, you know, like, if I'm told I need another operation, I don't go like this. I'm like, okay, I have to find the best doctor, and I have to do it and get it done, get it off my plate, and move on. And Which is know, what astrology is, is practical. It's so I mean, practical. The history, the history of astrology, then, if you can just touch on that. Um, I mean, it's it was magical. It was just understanding the stars um, in relation to the season, so we know when to plant well, the agricultural, seasons. is that right? That's why I think the Chinese and the Japanese like me so much because they're very in tune mm -hmm. with the cycles of the seasons. Back in Mesopotamia, 2500 BC, uh, the, the shepherd would s sit on a mountaintop. Now they could see the stars in a way we can't see them because we have too many city lights. But they could see it and they began writing down everything. They didn't know what was important, the comets, the meteorites, the new moon and full moon. In astrology is critical. If you read astrologyzone.com, my website, you'll see I talk all the time about new moons and full moons. And then eclipses will come maybe four times a year, but uh, eclipses are like new moons or full moons on steroids. They're very strong. And if the universe thinks, oh, she's just languishing. She's been in that company 12 years. She's never gotten a promotion or a raise. I'm going to get little Mary out of that job. <laughs> and she'll cry and she won't know how to pay her rent. And then a much better job comes. Or, um, or Joan has been dating that man for 13 years and he never brings the ring. That's not productive. I'm going to break them up. <laughs> so astrology then, um, I mean, how can people, this is a brilliant yeah. tool of, of a way of, helping you to live your best life. Would oh, you agree? Absolutely. You know, first of all, you realize that things that happen that that jar you, that 
that aren't good stem from somewhere. And you have to figure out why that happened. And sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But whatever it is, you have to find out how to fix that so that it doesn't happen again. Because the next time the cycle will come around, you'll have to experience it again right. if you don't learn from it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, you you keep getting rewards for things that you did do right. And it, it, it encourages you. Now, I know there's been a lot of horrors in the world. You know, mm -hmm. we've all seen the news the past few years. Uranus and Pluto were fighting like what we call in America the, the Hatfields and the McCoys, <laughs> two families that simply could not get along in the Old West. And uh, a friend of mine is an astrologer. He's older than me. We would have lunch, and he says, it's going to get worse. It started with the Aurora, the, the man with the orange hair, when he killed people in the movie theater. That was the very first contact of these two planets. And he said, it's going to get bloodier. And then we saw ISIS, and it got really bad. But then, in 2015, March, they separated. They stopped fighting. They said, okay, like two gentlemen on a street corner, we started a public discussion. We exposed the problem so that people will see it and deal with it. And I won't see you again for 100 years. Or <laughs> I can't remember the exact cycle, but it could be 75 years. But it's long. It's really long. Not in our generation. And they went their separate ways. But one crossed the street and one went this way because they were at 90-degree angles. But they're not far enough apart yet. I want them 10 degrees apart. So astrology then is a, a, a great tool for um, you know, for fine tuning as a mm -hmm. as a guiding system, a learning uh, a learning system. Mm -hmm. um, it's also good for travel. <laughs> I, something I never thought of. Um, and when I was looking at your site, yeah. I thought, wow! I can tell you when if to I'm go a Gemini, and what kind of place I'm a Gemini. So what? As a Gemini. Uh, and of course, I'm a I travel writer. Where do you, I? Where should, where's the best place I gotta to go? I got to send you to Bangkok, where um, you have lots to do and lots to learn. I, I just want to put you in a culture that is totally unfamiliar, <laughs> where you'll have to learn the money and the, and, you know, some of the language, and you know, they have the floating markets and the flowers, and um, you you need somewhere far because you're a travel sign just like Sagittarius is. Those are the two travel signs, and you want to be embraced by the culture. You want to just fully devote yourself to it and try the foods. And um, Gemini is an intellectual sign that likes to study and learn. You want to come back with an experience that you've learned mm -hmm. something. You know, Now, Capricorn is more interested in the history, and they want to go to, uh, like, Mexico City and the, and the ruins of the Aztec that are not too far away, and they can take little side trips. Now, Pisces love something spiritual. I might send mm -hmm. them to Lourdes where people get cured uh, or, or to um, Turin where the Shroud of Jesus is. Now Aquarius, I'd send them to, um, I'd send them to Austin, Texas where that's such a, a center for uh, South by Southwest and the mm -hmm. high tech and you know all the things and, and plus it's a little quirky. Aries likes to do something physical. So I might send them to someplace like Vancouver where they can hike, but then they could also have a four-star hotel if they don't feel like sleeping in a tent, you know. But they usually like a lot of sports, so I'd like to send them somewhere where they can do sports. And Taurus is very sensual. I want to send them to Havana. Even though it's poor there, beauty is beauty and even crumbling beauty is beautiful. And the Cuban food Oh, I've had some in San Francisco that I just love. I think Taurus would love the the sights and the sounds and the colors and the fragrances of Havana. A scholar told me that really that which, which is I thought was really interesting is that um, the story that the Christian story of uh, the Christ birth story is not so much a historical story, but it's an astro astrology story. Yes. It, the great star that the three wise men were following was a conjunction of Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. And those three wise men were astrologers. We know that for sure. You can Google it and they'll mm. uh, you know, tell you all the facts on it. 
Yeah, it's it's amazing, right? It's yeah. absolutely fascinating. But I do want to say that astrology is not a replacement for religion. Okay, yeah. Because some of the millennials think it is, and that hurts me. One girl said, I gave up my religion. I'm Jewish, and I gave it up. I'm like, no, and I'm Catholic, but I'm like, no, 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 no. Religion teaches you ethics and how to deal with difficult situations, and you're inspired by the Bible and the Gospels and all the stories. You no, no, no. Astrology is the study of mathematical cycles, but it doesn't replace religion. I think God set up those planets. I, I know from all my medical things that nature is very conservative. She doesn't do one thing she doesn't have to do. I can give you a million examples. Trust me on this. So those planets are gorgeous, and they're up there for a reason. And even though science hasn't figured it out yet, we know that there's a reason. And so a final question then, if you have one piece of advice for living your best life, uh, to anybody that's watching this, what would you say? I would say be optimistic, be happy, expect the best, don't blame yourself for all the, the rough things that happen. If, if you know you did something to mess up, you can correct it. That's the beauty of life. Look into astrology, see how it can help you. If you're in, enthused by it, take some classes and go slow. Don't eat the whole pie all at once in one sitting. A lot of students do that. Thanks so much for sharing with me <laughs> today. You. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, I just love meeting you. <laughs> you asked me the best question. <laughs> Thank you. And I wish you all the best.